Hey guys, girls, metal fans, everybody else. Welcome to Water Sound Studios UK. We are the band Annihilator from, I was going to say Canada, where it originated, but uh, Canada, former Canada, UK, UK, Italy. So we're just uh, hanging out here. This is the first time all four of us have been together here at the new rehearsal digs. Um, before we rehearsed in Canada for quite a few years together, uh, and then I unexpectedly made a move to the UK, built this, of course, custom studio and rehearsal room, but also a loft upstairs for the guys because one of the main reasons the loft was built up there was sort of designed around what I thought the guys would like from their, their many, many days and years in tour buses, hotels, um, you know, pamper them a bit, you know, just give them what they want and hopefully you guys are liking the Thank room. You. Yeah, I think that's <laughs> awesome. The guys are here uh, going over some songs from the new record. Aaron's going to lay down some lead guitars. Uh, Rich, uh, most of you know, that know Annihilator, know that I do the bass on most of the records. But uh, my bassist, Rich, is kind of essential for another reason. Not only bass playing and the, the touring stuff, but uh, he's working with me on some of the recording aspects, tracking drums. Uh, but it's going to be kind of essential uh, to me in the, the mix. He's more of the calm thinking guy. I'm more of the spazzing out freak that's drank too much coffees and stressing. A lot of bands use um, drum software. And in the earlier days, drum machines started out with machines like Elisa's SR-16 back in the 90s. And uh, it, drums are basically the toughest rock instrument to track especially in the fast and noisier types of music like heavy metal and thrash metal. Uh, it's most engineers that make the sounds, get the sounds of drums, say they know how to record drums as well as singing and guitars and basses, but uh, it's really an art form. It's something that I never tried to learn because I knew that, that uh, tracking, recording the drums, you had to be really good to do it. And there's only a small percentage a percentage of engineers in studios that really know how to do this properly. Um, also, using software these days is an incredible money-saving technique that a lot of bands have to use because they can't afford the tens of thousands of uh, dollars, euros, pounds to, to go into studios, hire really good engineers to do it, and have a drummer uh, either take time off work or come in from playing in another band uh, to pay the drummer to do his stuff, and that usually or her stuff. It usually takes a long time to do the drums properly. Uh, so it became very convenient for me in Canada with my previous studios to use the software. And a lot of bands actually use it that you don't realize um, are using this software. This time we realized, well, regardless of the expense, it's time to go back to, in my mind, in Rich's mind, when we were talking about this record that we were going to do, was the Never Neverland raw, real experience. And the only way to recreate even part of that or anything close to that would be, of course, to get the, uh, uh, I'd say Ray Hartman real drum feel. Uh, I say Ray Hartman in there because I think Fabio could tell you that, you know, his, one of his favorite drummers would be Ray Hartman. I think a lot of drummers in, uh, that grew up in the 90s, uh, even if they didn't know the Annihilator records, always gravitated, went towards uh, Annihilator because of the drummers. Randy Black, Ray Hartman, Mike Mangini, to name three killer drummers. So, um, exactly as you said, I mean, the Annihilator's history involves so many great drummers, and uh, that's only my personal taste. I mean, Ray Hartman helped create it and invented, uh, along with Jeff and the other guys at the time, the Annihilator sound and what uh, everybody knows. So um, back to 2017 when we were touring with Testament, we were thinking about uh, recreating that drum feel and do something with it and maybe try to evolve it in something modern but at the same time uh, having it with that same, you know, kick ass and uh, real real feel Fabio I think had just randomly sent in a YouTube link to me yeah. about him he was playing some annihilator drums and I kind of made the decision within a day what I liked about Fabio's drumming was that 
I could tell that he, sorry, you do now, but you didn't have that all that much experience at the time. I thought, well, since I'm using drum software and writing this stuff in the studio, as long as he can play this stuff live and maybe he might get to the point in a few years where maybe he was someone that might take the, the Hartman route, you know, where he had that, he's not, you're not from a thrash speed background. Yeah. You're from a, a more of a, Heavy power metal. Aldridge, Castor yeah. of a power Absolutely. metal kind of stuff. And that's what Hartman had. So I kind of uh, kind of thought maybe there was some hope, so to speak, as, as more than just a, a touring drummer. Instead of coming back and forth from Italy to the UK, we started off where Fabio would play drums in his, I guess, rehearsal place, yeah, record stuff, it. send it up. And that translated after that to, okay, now we get some really cool drum parts use these little mini pads, you know those little pra flat practice rubber pads you can see in music stores where where you bang on this rubber pad and it turns into a drum sound. So he got one of those so that he could send me this and I could put it into my uh, system and, and play along and write some riffs to his drumming. Um, and that's what happened. We essentially used a, a program called Cubase. Uh, most people use Pro Tools, which is a popular one in the recording industry. We used uh, Cubase, which I've been using since 2003 or something, or 2002. Um, and these little drum pad sounds went into my computer. I just started writing riffs to real playing. Um, and then it progressed. Now Fabio's up here, and after we do our little week or two of press, uh, we, the three of us, go into the studio and track drums. Aaron will have been done some solos on the record. Since you're the guy that lives far away, we couldn't have Aaron here every day on this thing, but uh, we're lucky to get him in now. But uh, some more shredding like on the last album. Anyways.